We originally weren't going to review this card. After the Yeston cute pet review, which actually involved the custom molded shroud, we looked at this one and went, well, it's just a video card with some anime character painted on it. That's not interesting. At least that's what we thought, until so many of you expressed interest in seeing waifus via our comment section and Twitter. So we bought this. We received this a couple weeks ago, but only got to reviewing it today. This is the Yeston RX 5700 XT waifu edition. <laughs> yes. And it's a three fan 5700 XT with a floral pink shroud and a waifu on the back, which seems like it'll definitely find a market. Priced at between $500 and $700, depending on which China-based seller you use and how much they gouge you, it's one of the more expensive 5700 XT models for someone in the US to import. We'll see if it's any good today. Before that, this video is brought to you by the Gigabyte Z390 AORUS Master Motherboard, which comes equipped with one of the more powerful Z390 VRMs for heavier overclocks. The AORUS Master is also one of the few motherboards with a real heatsink this generation, featuring a mix of high surface area fins and looks-oriented cover blocks. Oh, and it's also got updated RGB illumination. Learn more at the link below. The waifu may not be thick, but it is a three-fan standard design that tries to maximize on the height while keeping the width to a somewhat standard sizing. So our goal today is to determine whether the waifu is hot. And we're going to be doing that with a bunch of testing like always. We are benchmarking the Yeston RX 5700XT waifu for thermals, noise, frequency behavior, of course, versus all the other 5700XT cards we've tested, which includes a lot of really high-end ones, a lot of not great ones, one meme card, and a few things in between. So there's a lot to test against. We've got a full stack of 5700 XTs. We're looking at GPU thermals, GDDR6 thermals, so forth. The Yeston RX 580 2048 SP, it's, it's a 570. It's just got a stupid name that AMD made. But the 2048 uh, 580 by Yeston was the cute pet. We actually really liked this card for reasons that weren't particularly related to the GPU. It wasn't good value for the most part. It's a GPU that shouldn't really exist, but does in the China market. So whatever. But the thing we liked about it was that it did something actually different, and that was completely custom molding a shroud to look like a cat or something. Its name is Wan Wan, and everybody loves it. So that was really interesting for this card. It had an aesthetic that was different, and we don't really talk about visuals very much because there's nothing to talk about. All of the video cards look the same. They're all gamer. That's the theme for video cards, and at least in the Western market. But Yeston, to its credit, does try to do different things. This one's got less of a, an interesting shroud because it's just, it's just a shroud that's pink and it's got some holes shaped like flowers. It's not that special. The back of it's just a painted backplate, which we've seen before and isn't particularly interesting, although for the right audience it probably is very interesting. And we're just trying to see if it's actually any good. So prices will vary on this. Uh, Taobao, it looks like it tends to be about $500. AliExpress, which is where we bought it because everyone else was out of stock when we ordered ours. AliExpress, we paid 700 USD, which is an absolute ripoff. Don't do that. The only reason we can do that is because we're making money off of the video, so we can justify it. But you 100% should never do that if you're a consumer, because it's still a 5700 XT. So anyway, we've got some testing. Let's go through it and see how the RX 5700 XT waifu does and if it ends up on top. Let's get into the thermals of this card. We'll start with noise normalized thermals at 40 dBA, which allows us to determine the efficiency of a cooler in a like-for-like -like environment, rather than just brute forcing it from the fans. We also have power budget listed as this influences thermals further. So we have good news and bad news. The waifu is hot, too hot. She's running about 99 degrees Celsius for GPU junction temperature, which is the worst we've yet measured. That said, judging by a lot of the comments from you all when requesting the review of this card, our understanding is that waifus are supposed to be hot. We're not really sure why you'd want that, but it appears that the wish has been granted, so that's the good news. Anyway, with the RX 5700 XT waifu running a junction temperature of 99 degrees, it's technically clear of TJ Maxx by about 11 degrees Celsius, but a hot case accompanying the hot waifu would rapidly approach TJ Maxx and exhibit clock drops. This cooler is the least efficient of all the ones we've tested, ignoring the reference card, and that's including the waifu's thick counterpart by XFX. Given that the waifu can't beat the thick, we must look next to edge temperature for the cart. The waifu's edge temperature measures at about 77 degrees Celsius, again setting it among the hottest partner models so far. The only card doing worse than the waifu is the reference card. For point of reference, the 
best performer we saw was similar in power budget, and that would be the Power Color Red Devil at 220 watts, which is 10 watts more than the power budget of the Waifu, but 20 degrees cooler in junction temperature. That's an efficient design by comparison. We must next look to GDDR6 thermals when noise normalized, after which point we can open up the Waifu for inspection. GDDR6 thermals with the 210 watt power budget measured at 88 degrees Celsius, showing that the thick is now on top of the Waifu thermals. The 88 degree results puts the Waifu between the worst models, where it bests only the inferior reference design and original prefix MSI evoke design when normalized to 40 dBA. The delta between the Yeston card and the reference card is still wide at 10 degrees Celsius, but the Waifu card makes us uncomfortable, and we believe it would be enough to encroach upon unsafe GDDR6 thermals if in a sufficiently warm operating environment. High room or case ambient temperature could push it in that direction pretty quickly. The Waifu's MOSFET thermals are on the warm side and showing less efficient than competing cards, but overall within spec and technically fine. It's at 87 degrees for the VRM MOS temperature. That's unimpressive and comparatively weak, but also not near maximum FET temperatures, so we're fine. It's probably time to take a closer look at the Waifu. Externally, the card has an older fan layout and spacing that's recently regained popularity. It's running two 90 millimeter fans for the outer two, then a smaller central fan at about 70, 73 millimeters. Sapphire also does this on its Nitro, which is a recent card and one of the best performers. This design is used to maximize the vertical clearance afforded by taller PCBs, but to also minimize the horizontal length of the card. As for the front, floral perforations line the pink shroud, but these are there for looks and don't provide any meaningful thermal change. The top of the shroud uses a whole lot of plastic, which, like the XFX Thick, is responsible for some of the heat trappage that we see in testing. There's also no thermal pad between the back plate and the back of the PCB, which is unfortunate because the gap isn't that big, and it is a metal back plate, so you could sink some more heat into it. And in testing the MSI Evoke changes, we saw that it actually did help. Anyway, the plastic is used to host the full accompaniment of RGB LEDs, which can be toggled with a switch if you don't want them for some reason. It's also one of the many smaller PCBs for LED placement across the board. The shroud has a few custom cut PCBs dotting its underside. There's actually about three or four of them that are easily visible without even pulling the whole card apart. So that adds to the cost, but also accounts for the RGB LED setup that the Waifu card is running. The Waifu is only screwed in by the usual four GPU screws and retention kit accompanying them, and then four additional backplate screws that go into the cooler. We're immediately greeted with a nonverbal red circle with a red line through it on the backside, and because we have no idea what that could possibly mean, we assume it probably doesn't apply to us. The GPU paste job is one of the worst we've ever seen on a production video card, but at least the whole die is covered, to be fair. It's just that the mount is uneven and likely contributing to the large junction deltas versus the edge temperature. The amount of paste isn't really the issue as much as mounting pressure distribution is for this card. Past this, we noticed next that the MOSFET thermal pad had a black mark on it, which doesn't really matter thermally, probably, but this is from the Sharpie marks that are on the underlying MOSFETs. We're not really sure why any of the MOSFETs would have writing on them. It looks like a number two, probably QC at the factory or something but it did transfer to the thermal pads. It's just not something we've really seen before, although it shouldn't matter too much in theory. The memory is Micron on this specific card, although supply may change from card to card, so we don't know if yours might be Samsung if you buy it. Cooling of the memory is handled via a nickel-plated copper cold plate, which is standard but effective as a solution, and some lower-end thermal pads are sandwiched between the memory and the cold plate. The GPU is cooled by a copper cold plate as a standard as well, without any nickel plating for this one. As for the VRM, there's an aluminum plate contacting the MOSFETs and welded to the bottom of the fin stack. For the PCB components, the card is using a standard International Rectifier 35217 controller on the backside with SIC 620A integrated power stages for the V-Core VRM. Time to look at auto thermals for the Yeston card. Allowed to self-regulate its fan speeds, the card sticks to around 2500 RPM rather than the 40 dBA mark of about 15 to 60 RPM. At this much louder of a speed, we're closer to 51 dBA, which is about on par with the reference 5700 XT's stock speeds. Even while operating louder than every other card on this chart, the Waifu still isn't on top. It's at 86 degrees junction, putting it as about the same as the original MSI Evoque or 5700 XT Pulse, which the XT Pulse is a good card, but it's also not that expensive. This also has the Waifu card worse than the Thick, which runs louder than most other cards here, but quieter than the Waifu. 
GDDR6 thermals under auto settings allow the waifu to switch positions now roughly equal with the Red Devil at 73 to 74 degrees with the 51 dBA fan noise from the waifu being the worst aspect of it. VRM thermals are also good, but it really is loud under this full auto configuration. Being about as loud as the reference card is a feat for stock fan speeds and not something to really be proud of for any partner model. Here's a chart showing the RPM to thermal response when set to auto, allowing VBIOS to control the waifu fans. In this chart, thermals rocket to about 86 degrees junction right away, with the fan jumping to 2500 RPM and holding steady once the target temperature is met. Target temperature seems to be about 64 degrees edge, but the delta between edge and junction is what's allowing the card to run poorly overall. Here's a very zoomed in frequency plot next, we're zooming it to 1850 MHz to 2040 MHz as the range to better show the differences in the clocks, but we'll keep it simple for, uh, for the comparison overall. The Yeston Waifu RX5700 XT ends up at about 1940 MHz on average, which places it between the XFX Thick on its OCV BIOS and the Power Color Red Devil also on its OCV BIOS. It's not particularly low or high for this test, it's just sort of in the middle of a bunch of other cards. And here's a quick plot for the noise to RPM response for the Yeston 5700 XT. The card ends up with a baseline of about 37.7 dBA at 1300 RPM or 28% PWM on this unit, which is mostly comprised of the waifu's screaming coil whine. The coil whine is really bad at lower load levels with the lower fan RPMs, but this is drowned out later closer to about 1600 RPM, at which point we're approaching 40.5 dBA or so. The card maintains a fairly linear noise progression through the end of its range, maxing out at about 3200 RPM and 61 dBA. Auto speeds stick closer to 51 to 53 dBA, depending on the temperatures that VBIOS is monitoring. Conclusions then, the card really is not worth it, to be frank. It's at $500, it's not worth it. At $700, it's worth it for us and nobody else, unless you are making money off of the content somehow. So. The, the card is just, it's strictly not good. The cooler is not efficient. It has all the same problems of the XFX thick, which is namely that it's got a, a big plastic shroud overhanging part of the, the most critical part of the fin stack. The, f the fins are oriented up to down in this orientation of the video card. And there's a top layer of fins, a sort of a bottom layer of fins. The top layer of fins spits air right into that shroud. And that's trapping a lot of heat. So with the XFX thick, we found that removing the shroud had the biggest impact, the biggest improvement in performance. That's all XFX had to do to really fix a lot of its card issues. And the same would be true here. There's no point in us really spending 40 hours on proving that. This time, it's just, that's the way it is. So anyway, it's interesting from the standpoint that it's different. It's not quite as interesting to us as the 580 cube pet. I should face it the other way. We'll get demonetized. And the... the uh, the Cube Pet was just kind of fun. It's a lot cheaper. It's like, I don't know what we paid for it anymore. It's in the video, but it starts at like 160, 180. If you go to the right sellers, we, we paid, I think, two something. I don't remember. But anyway, that's a lot more interesting to us. It's, I can't even say it's fine because it's not. It just straight has some of the worst thermals we've tested. It has one of the least efficient designs we've tested for GDDR6, for MOSFETs, for what, GPU, whatever. You, want, you name it, it's not great. And even when we allow it to run how it wants to with the fans blasting compared to everyone else, it's all relative here, right? If it's relatively worse than the next best card, why, or even the next worst card, or even the worst card, why would you buy it? But yeah, it's if you really like waifus and anime, maybe, but I, I don't, you could, can't, I'm sure someone makes these. I'm positive. You could get a custom shroud painted for a good card. Uh, or backplate, I should say. The shroud, you'll have more trouble with. Anyway, if you extremely, extremely like the visuals of it, well, you're not going to find this anywhere else. So I guess buy it if that's really what matters to you. And uh, I'm not sure who our audience is at this point. I'm not going to ask because I don't want to know. But anyway, that's it. It was kind of a fun card to look at. That was phrased poorly. It was kind of a fun card to test. And uh, that's about it. So anyway, thanks for watching. I think probably the weakest points are the thermal pads, the thermal paste, the shroud design. 
well, most of it are the weak points. That's, that's all, it's all the weak points. Subscribe for more. Go to store.cameronsaccess.net to help us out directly. If you want to see more content like this, we did film the RX 580 Cute Pet review. You'll probably like that one. Go Google Gamers Nexus 580 Cute Pet and you'll find it. Otherwise, patreon.com slash gamers nexus for some behind the scenes videos. Or you can go to the store and pick up a mod mat, toolkit, or some of our shirts. And I will see you all next time.